Hi, everybody, and welcome back into Gamecock Central. Kendall Smith alongside of Wes Mitchell. And I know Gamecock fans are happy right now, Wes, because Spencer Rattler, South Carolina's quarterback, just announced his return to the Gamecocks. And I feel like everybody was kind of holding their breath for the last couple of weeks after the Gator Bowl. They're like, is he going? Is he staying? Word comes out that Spencer is staying at South Carolina. How huge is this for the Gamecock football program, Wes? Yeah, I think it continues the momentum from the end of last season, Kendall. And uh, obviously, I think it, it has started to trend this direction, but certainly Gamecock fans are ready to find out for sure if Rattler was going to be back. And uh, now they can let themselves dream. We saw... Rattler sort of start to hit his peak at the end of last season, the game against Tennessee, the game against Clemson. And um, now he'll look to continue that into another season at South Carolina. And uh, this is something one year ago when Rattler was first enrolling at South Carolina, nobody really thought was possible. But here we are, Rattler returning, Juice Wells returning. I think that's a key thing to mention here too, Kendall. Both those guys coming back. Not that they were necessarily a package deal, but certainly uh, very easy to see why those decisions could each affect each other because if you're Rattler, you want your top receiver. If you're Juice, you want your QB. And in the case of South Carolina, you're getting both those guys back now. So big for South Carolina and huge for South Carolina's new offensive coordinator, Dowell Loggins, as he's going to get a very strong base coming back next year. You know, as you mentioned, Wes, there were a lot of factors that went into this decision for Spencer Rattler. But ultimately, why do you think he decided to come back to South Carolina? You know, I think, Kendall, first of all, first of all this was a... Uh process that was not taken lightly by Rattler like you can tell he took his time he weighed the pros he weighed the cons and I, I think ultimately it probably came back to the fact that he believes he can improve his draft stock with another season at South Carolina you know that was something where as the year went on um, you know he did not have the season he probably expected going in then you, of course we saw the big finish to the year and you kind of wondered did he show enough to NFL teams to improve that stock from what it was as the year had kind of progressed. Um, it sounds like he didn't get the news he wanted as far as the projections go. And now what he'll do is come back, try to have a little bit more consistent season, try to continue to show what he did at the end of last year. And, uh, you know, we saw the blueprint. If he can carry over what he did, then certainly Rattler will have the opportunity to start to bring himself back up to where he wants to be. And, uh, you know, I, I think ultimately there were a lot of reasons, I'm sure, I think he is comfortable at South Carolina. I think he trusts Shane Beamer. I think um, the NIL opportunities he will continue to have at South Carolina are big. And then, of course, uh, going back to what we were just talking about, having your top receiver, having Juice Wells back, uh, that can't hurt either. So a very in-depth approach. He weighed all the variables and ultimately uh, decided that South Carolina and coming back for one more year was going to be best for him. We're still a little ways away from the season, but I know all of the fans are dreaming. They're thinking up, okay, where is South Carolina going to land next year? They had a great season this year, beating Clemson, beating Tennessee, making it to the Gator Bowl. And next year, you know, they're going to expect even more of a jump from South Carolina because in both of Shane Beamer's years so far, he has made steady progress so early predictions we won't hold you to it Wes but with guys like Spencer Rattler Juice Wells back several other veterans you'd expect South Carolina to pick up a few more players from the portal where do you think South Carolina can land in the SEC and what do you think a realistic season for them looks like with Spencer at the helm yeah I think this changes the expectations uh, dramatically I mean you're also looking at let's go ahead and look ahead you have Drake May versus Spencer Rattler, week one, college football, South Carolina versus North Carolina. So that game instantly becomes a battle of two uh, very highly valued quarterbacks in college football. So that that game right there sort of is going to set the stage for both of those teams. I think both will probably be top 25 going into next year. South Carolina actually just uh, got word on, month, on Tuesday that they were going to finish in the AP poll top 25 for the 2022 season. I think the return of Rattler 
the return of Juice Wells probably puts them well into that top 25 going into the 2023 season as well. So with that, Kendall, becomes more expectations, higher expectations. South Carolina, I expect, will be mentioned as a dark horse in the SEC East, even though we know Georgia is going to be the favorite going into next season. You got Tennessee coming back. They're going to want revenge on South Carolina. You got South Carolina who's going to want revenge on Florida for what happened in that game. So it's going to be fun. It gives South Carolina some juice, no pun intended. And I think Kendall now – Carolina fans are going to be they're going to be like, "All right, you got me 8, right? 8 wins last year. Can you push that number to 9? Can you push it to 10?" And I think for Carolina, the key finding a little bit more consistency. That's something Beamer talked about going into last season. We've seen this program under Shane Beamer rally and have some great highs so far. Like they they've played really well in some big games, which I think it was the opposite during the Muschamp era. Now it's can you find a little bit more consistency from week to week? And I think having some veteran guys like Rattler and Juice, veteran O-line, um, I, I think that's going to help them in that pursuit. Now the question that's really going to answer that question is can they add another difference maker or two to this roster transfer portal window now? And then, of course, there's another transfer portal window after the spring They'll try to add maybe a running back, a defensive end, maybe another wide receiver out there, and then I think we'll really have a good feel for what this roster should look like going into 2023. And South Carolina with a new offensive coordinator this year in Dowell Loggins, and just based off of the way he talked during his introductory press conference about a month ago, it seems like the offense that he's creating for the Gamecocks is going to accentuate Spencer Rattler more. I think that was also a problem in the 2022 season. Sometimes it seemed as if the plays that were designed weren't exactly fitting Spencer's strong suits. So this year, an opportunity for South Carolina to do that a bit more as they introduce a new offensive coordinator. But you mentioned the expectations, Wes. You know, I've seen Gamecock fans throw out their New Year's six games. We'll have to see yeah. how it shakes up. That is a high expectation. But uh, with the talent they're bringing back, I don't think anything is off the table for South Carolina and Shane Beamer. So certainly exciting times for the Gamecocks. Great news. Spencer Rattler is coming back to Columbia. He is going to be a Gamecock for another year and I know that all South Carolina fans are certainly rejoicing as they absolutely should Wes yeah it, it, but is there anybody happier right now than Dow Loggins because <laughs> you, rem you remember that press conference he <laughs> said his single biggest recruit right now was getting Spencer Rattler back to Columbia so it was more important than his or not more important than his wife but he said it's the biggest recruit since his since, wife or something like that something along yes the Yes, obviously um, he landed his wife uh, back in the day, and now he gets good news from Spencer Rattler as well. And uh, if you're an OC, you're coming in, you're trying to get settled in, having a top quarterback and having a top receiver certainly makes that transition a little bit easier. And I think we're going to see this offense, Kendall. I think they're going to try to take some of the things South Carolina did well last year and just simplify the operation as far as logistically – how you get there? How do you call plays? Are, are you huddling up a lot? Or are you sort of trying to simplify how you do things? I think Loggins' time at Arkansas in a college offense for a couple of years is going to be extremely important as far as this transition goes. So um, that that now becomes one of the biggest storylines going into the spring practice, which will be in a couple of months. We'll, it'll be here before we know it. will be what does this offense look like and how do they sort of take Spencer Rattler's uh, strengths and put a spotlight on those. It's going to be fun. I'm excited because the fans are excited, and that gives us plenty to talk about on GamecockCentral.com. Yeah, you said it best. We love it when the fans are happy, and the fans are happy right now. Spencer Rattler returning, Juice Wells returning as well. We've got plenty more over on GamecockCentral.com, so be sure to check us out there and on all of our social medias at Gamecock Central. Wes, thank you so much for joining me here to break down this big news of Spencer Rattler returning. And thanks so much to all of you for joining us as well. He's Wes Mitchell. I'm Kendall Smith. This is Gamecock Central, and we will see you guys shortly. Have a great day.